Megan Hicks of I Run Far. I'm with Drew Holman. It's the Thursday before the 2022 Western States Endurance Run. Good morning, Drew. How are you? I'm great. Megan, thanks for thanks for having me. And thanks to you and Brian and the whole I Run Far crew for everything that you do for our sport. Um, you, you're a big pillar to, to how people learn about what, what's going on. So You are very sweet, but are you deflecting this interview away I, from you? That's what I do. That's <laughs> I grew up in northern Minnesota. You know, we don't talk about ourselves here. So I'm Minnesotan too, which means we'll never talk about anything. <laughs> exactly. We'll just go in circles all day. All so. right. So you are arriving to this starting line a different, I mean, we're all different people, but you're a different person. You were a little under the radar last year, and now you're coming back with a podium finish in the back pocket. Yeah. How does that change or does that change anything about Saturday? Yeah. Um, to be honest, Megan, I think it's less about the podium finish and more about there's something magical about your first 100 miler and the unknown of going into last year's race <laughs> and kind of the, you know, the childlike view of what that could be like. Um, and this year it's more of like, oh, like I know what it means to do well at this race and it, I know how to suffer it's like you got to go deep and so I think mm. more than podiuming like you know I think there's so much out of our control in a hundred mile race when it's a hundred degrees hundred plus in the canyons um where yeah I could have a great day and finish on the podium again and I could have a great day and finish out of the top 10 because that's mm. the nature of western states and how competitive this race is and so really when I think about coming back it's more about how do I come back and have an incredible experience and enjoy myself out there while also putting myself in a position to, you know, compete and get the most out of myself? Now, this might be like slightly more existential than one should talk about on a Thursday before a race, but is there and can there be joy in like the real suffering of 100 miles? Because it's not like a 50 miler where it only hurts a little bit. Yeah. Like, there's some hurt in oh. 100. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, there's like, the physical pain, but I think there's also joy of like all the people that are out there supporting us. I mean, the fact that there's what, 380, I don't know the exact number of racers. And then there's like thousands of people that are there just to like allow the lucky few that get to run the race, the opportunity to be there. And like, I don't know. I think there's joy in that in embracing those people in that community. And, um, you know, it's also, there can be joy in, in, in embracing the suffer that is inevitable um, in a hundred miler. So, um, yeah, I think there can be joy. There has to be. Like, why else would we do this? Somehow we just keep showing up. We keep showing up. So, yeah. All right. So you have a hundred miles of the Western States course under your belt. Mm -hmm. You also came back for Western States training camp this year. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I did. Um, where are you at like headspace wise with that course like yeah. highs and lows of it for you what are you thinking about when it comes to the course itself yeah um so i'm really excited about the high country mm. um I, the only time i've ever run that section of the course was at the race last year and i just remember it was like the most magical experience to like press the escarpment and then drop into the high country and there's just like wildflowers and so much running water mm. and so i'm really excited about that um, and then I'm not really thinking about any specific, you know, section of the course because I know there's going to be highs and lows that didn't happen in different places mm. from last year. Um, and yeah, just kind of going to take it step by step and, you know, section by section. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited to, I'm hopeful that, you know. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's just so hard to know. There's so much that can happen in the hundred miles that, you know, I'm really excited about different sections of trails. Um, but I think I'm more excited about like, you know, last year I got to run 20 some miles with, you know, Alex Nichols and, mm. you know, Max. And that was like running with two legends in the sport. And I think that that's one of the beautiful things of Western States is that there's so many incredible people and athletes that are racing it that like, that's what I'm excited about is like sharing tra the miles mm -hmm. with um, these people that I look up to in the sport. Um, and yeah, just kind of seeing where that takes me. Well, now you're a legend yourself. So people oh. are going to be looking to run with you. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. I don't know about that. I think that uh, I was just saying, chatting about this earlier that it's just always such a stacked field mm. uh, that like, yes, I 
ran a good race last year. Um, but you know, Jared was running the second fastest time in this course ever, you know, and yeah, he didn't have a great day last year, but he could break the course record. And, um, there's just so many other men and women that I look up to in this sport and I respect so much that, yeah, like I ran a good race, but you know, I'll put myself in a position to compete. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think we just need to acknowledge that there's, there's 10 to 15 different guys that could run, win the race this year. So that's, that's fun. And so, um, I think I'm still flying a little bit under the, maybe I'm, you know, reality distortion field being <laughs> myself, but I'm still considering myself a dark horse a little bit. So I love it. You're the lightest dark horse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're like, I can't really say that I'm a dark horse, but I would like to maintain that, you know, position in, in the field. You're a dark horse with a bright light shining <laughs> yeah, upon exactly, you. Exactly. All right. So one of the blessings of having run a race before is that you've run the race before. We were talking a little bit off camera before the interview of like, um, sort of efficiencies that you want to find yeah. this year that you didn't without giving away the game day strategy. Yeah, yeah. What are some things that you're thinking about of like, well, I did that okay last year. I want to try to do that better. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing is that, um, I really love the competitive aspect of ultra and trail running. And, um, I think one of my learnings from last year is that like, you can't get too wrapped up in that mm. because it really is about taking care of myself and, you know, really being honest with where I am in any given moment and, you know, not marking moves by other, you know, men in the race. Um, and so I think that that's been one of my big learnings is really like trying to meditate on being incredibly present with where I am at, really, you know, seeing reality in its clearest form mm -hmm. and being able to say like, okay, this is a, a moment where I can push or this is a moment where I need to just let somebody go. Um, and I think that that's what I'm taking most from last year is that, you know, a uh, hundred miles is, you know, Western States is one that we get to compete because of the nature of it being downhill and fast, but then you add a hundred plus degree heat. And so you can't really just go, you know, I'm going to race thing, this thing from, from the start line and, you know, we'll see what the weather does, but it's going to be hot. So, you know, <laughs> just kind of taking that into account. It'll either be a little bit hot, kind of hot or hot. I was talking I mean, about it's this. It's going to be hot. You know, like it was cool last weekend and everyone's like, oh, it's going to be cold and so fast. And then you're like, it's still going to be 90 in Auburn, which means like 95 to a hundred in the canyons. If we're lucky, like it's still going to be bloody hot. Yeah. So, you know, like ice management. And I think that's something I'm also thinking a lot more about mm -hmm. is like last year, um, there was a little bit of, you know, maybe it's naiveness. Um, but I was like, oh, I'm just, it's just running. I'm just going to go out there and run. And this is a race where you have to like really pay attention to mm -hmm. all the little things. And so, um, you know, I've spent some more time thinking about like, what are my cooling strategies and how, how does my crew support me? And, in those moments and then how do I, you know, show up for them in, in the best form possible and, you know, keep reminding them that I love them and that they're here because, you know, this is a special day that we're all experiencing together. Well, that's a good way to end this, uh, this interview. A quick shout out to the people who are crewing and pacing you on Saturday. Yeah, so um, my incredible partner, Sasha, um, is gonna be crew chiefing. Um, wouldn't be here without her, incredibly lucky that um, I have her by my side. And then uh, same pacers as last year. I've got Patty O'Leary and Fernando de Samaniego Stitta coming out um, to, to run the last 40 with me. Um, and then I have my brother and my parents are out here this year. My parents were here last year too, so they got to experience it. Um, Andrew and Sherry are a couple of good friends from the Bay Area who are going to be running one of the crew stations. And then uh, our friend Addie. So it's a great little crew. And um, Coach David, David, David Roche and Megan are out here too, so they'll they'll be part of the day too. So most excellent. I wish you the best of luck yeah. on this one way journey downhill, mostly downhill, <laughs> sort of downhill. <laughs> so not just downhill. This is a bunch of crap. Also, everyone's like, oh, it's just a buffed out fire road, and it's a lot of like, yeah, pay attention. So anyway. ultra runners are funny. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck on the downhill race that has 18,000 feet of climbing. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and um, Megan, thank you for everything that you do. And um, you got a big race in a couple of weeks here too with Hard Rock. So I'm excited to follow along. 
like a good deflecting Minnesotan. <laughs> yeah. Best of luck to you. Yeah. Thank you, Megan. Talk soon. <laughs>